Today on Simple Science, we will be looking at the mother of all ICT systems and computer system units. It's appropriately named the motherboard because it is the mother of all of these components in that it brings together all of the child components of a computer, such as your CPU, RAM, ROM, HDDs, and so on. And it allows for the facilitation of the data transfer between these devices. Okay, so before we go ahead and understand the basics of the motherboard, we need to understand how and why these internal hardware components interact with each other. So let's look at the most important component, that is the CPU. This is where all of the interaction of the calculations and analysis and um, processing of the data and instructions take place, okay? And where does the CPU get this data from? I'm going to introduce this little data and instructions flow bilateral arrow here. So it, it gets the information and transmit the processed information to the RAM, okay? This is where it primarily gets and, and transmits the information. And where does that information come from? It comes from the other components, the other devices within your computer. So for instance, if you're loading an application that is installed on your hard disk, it gets that information to be processed by the CPU via the RAM from the hard disk, okay? Uh, likewise, any graphics information to be processed and transmitted uh, to your external devices, it will be done on the video card through the RAM to be processed on the CPU. Likewise, audio data from your sound card is received at the sound card, transmitted through the RAM, and is processed by the CPU. So you essentially need a platform for this sort of interaction between the components to happen. And this is where the motherboard comes in. The motherboard, by definition, connects the CPU to all other hardware devices. So your CPU typically sits in uh, a CPU slot here, uh, different ways of installation for AMD, for Intel CPUs, and so on. But that's not what we're going to cover today. Then you've got a connection for the RAM. So the RAM stick gets inserted into uh, a certain slot in your uh, in your motherboard you've also got uh, other components on the motherboard such as the rom which typically comes manufactured with the motherboard okay and then you've also got uh, places where other devices such as your hard disk can be connected to the motherboard it it's connected indirectly via some sata cables typically um, on the motherboard okay you've also got some direct connections for video cards onto the motherboard typically done through pci uh, express Lanes, okay, lanes essentially are these little ports with two holes that allows for the connection and transmission of data from the video cards to the motherboard. Likewise, for sound cards, you have something similar. And you've also got some external ports for external hardware like CPU and audio um, sources, okay, and um, the media sources such as monitor like VGA ports, as you can see there. That comes pre-built in. Uh, with the motherboard, okay? And the way in which the data is transmitted to and from the components on a motherboard are via these motherboard buses. So motherboards themselves are inherently printed circuit boards. They're printed circuit boards with uh, copper, copper wiring etched onto a green platform. This non-conductive green layer that is the signature of, of motherboards and once the copper is etched onto the green layer, it's coated by another layer of epoxy for strength, okay? And the copper wiring on the motherboard is how the data is transmitted and received, and that is known as buses, okay? So buses move information and data between the components on a motherboard, and essentially, if you think about it, the faster in which the data um, is transmitted through these buses, the, fa the more data, the faster the data moves between components, okay? So how many bits per second, whatever. So the speed of a motherboard, the speed of your computer really, is called the bus speed, okay? So the speed of the buses, so speed of these copper wiring, is limited by the width of these individual copper wires etched onto the motherboard. And this speed is measured in bits. So essentially, it tells us how much data can be transmitted by the buses at once. So for instance, if you've got a 16-bit bus, um, that essentially means that that bus can transmit 16 bits of data at once. So if you convert that back down to bytes, that's about two bytes at once per uh, one of these uh, copper wires, okay? So the next concept you need to understand about um, motherboards 
are form factors. So these are essentially industry standard shapes and layouts of motherboards. Okay, and the way the, the reason why we have different form factors is to fit with different cases and power supplies and different use cases of um, of motherboards in computer systems. So the most common one that you'll see now around is the standard ATX form factor. It has the most number of expansion slots, as you can see, a lot of video card slots there. Best airflow setup as well, and um, essentially it's 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 big, right? It's 12 by 13 inches big okay and you see it in most uh, powerful computers or really just standard computers nowadays and then you've got your micro atx which is small a smaller form factor you'll see this in um, small form factor computers you know tip, those released by dell these are typically uh, 9.6 inches a side and then you've got your mini atx which is more for low consumption applications so such as embedded computers so for you know your little robots uh, for industrial applications as well for IOT as well so smaller edge devices um, so these are typically 6.7 inches aside and you've also got a uh, nano ITX small uh, form factor so these are small for your smart TVs right so smart entertainment like PVRs and media centers they're typically less than five inches aside and then the smallest form factor standardized is the Pico ITX right and this is uh, for very very simple um, devices such as uh, digital signage or in your computers you've got in vehicle computers all right motherboards always come with chipsets and these are essentially ROM chips and chipsets are responsible for the interfacing in, of the software between the other devices like CPU like your video cards your your RAMs and so on okay and the chipset as I mentioned contains ROM and ROM as I mentioned in the previous video contains two key components that's your BIOS program and your bootstrap sequence for a computer so that is essential for a computer if we look at the boot sequence to recap the bios instructions are passed from the rom to the cpu that cpu loads that information onto the ram and then looks for a valid boot disk okay and the boot disk is essentially where your operating system is stored and it boots that operating system it loads the operating system to take control of the cpu so beyond the the the, the, the loading of the rom the operating system takes charge and that all starts from the rom and every single motherboard comes with a rom and it is the really the bread and butter of the initiation of a computer final components of a motherboard as i mentioned on the side you typically have these external ports where you can connect your usbs and so on and when you attach them onto a standard casing of a uh, computer tower for instance they typically appear on the back side of a computer and you simply directly connect your external devices on the back of your computer okay um, likewise on the front of your computer cases you typically see uh, some USB ports some audio jacks so this does not uh, come from the motherboard but it comes uh, indirectly via uh, the front panel connectors from the case which you can attach to the motherboard and effectively allows for the connection of the external devices via the front panel of the computer onto the motherboard and that's how the data gets from the front to uh, the motherboard so those are the essential features of a motherboard of course we can go into much more technical detail but i just want to cover the basics of a motherboard if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and i look forward to introducing more it concepts with you next time thank you very much and see you next time